Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Gold Mythic Mike who is going to be an event character coming to RTS. Now Mike as you know is part of the Whisperers, he's an RTS created Whisperer in the Six Star era. There was a Mike that was created, I think he had Collateral, he was pretty good for, for Walkers, SR, that sort of thing. And if you had a couple of him, it was pretty, pretty interesting. But Mike here visually is looking, looking pretty brutal. He kind of gives me Mad Max vibes, you know, um, chrome and all that stuff. <laughs> it, it, the weapon is nuts, though. The weapon is nuts. A massive spear. I really like it. And he's also got like a a nice little scimitar and on around his waist. On the left hand side, you can see he's also got a a cleaver across his chest. He's very much uh, got the weaponry. Um, he's also got a raven. We do have a raven reference with Beta as another um, Whisperer character, so that is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, Mike is a Whisperer. As you can see, he's wearing the Whisperer mask. That is pretty much the only thing he's got that really says that he's a Whisperer is the actual mask. He's got no, like, no, not the arms, not the uh, not, not any extras on top. But um, We'll check on the, the stats as a limit break to level 680 character. He has got 14,698 attack, 16,121 defense, and 16,595 HP. He is a strong character. He is considered a support character, a mythic character, of course, and just confirmation there that he is a member of the Whisperer's Allegiance. Okay, so first of all, we'll look at his Adrenaline Rush, and it is called Plague Guard. It has got a recharge rate of 66 AP. Up to two enemies get Taunt for two turns. This character gets 50% defense for two turns and heals by 100% of their max HP. I actually like this quite a lot because it's controlling. I like the controlling element of it. But it's very, very powerful on the defense and HP boost here. But it's just to Mike himself. I think if it's got really high power in terms of keeping him up, if it's just to himself, it can be this good. It can be a full heal. It can be, you know, 50% you know, defense. This is a really nice boost on a defense team and on an attack team if he's viable there. And I will say that checking through his kit, he's viable on both attack and defense. But I like this rush a lot. He is 66 AP, so if you do want to use him on a defense team and you want this to pop off on a regular basis, you will be required to have AP on attack on his weapon. But potentially you could go for a full stat weapon because there are other parts of his kit which will give him AP from time to time. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, so here we are. You can see I've got my Adrenaline Rush ready to go. And this would work the same way on attack or defense. It does no damage. So you can attack through Guardian Shield. This is really beneficial for when he's on a defense team. You know, the Guardian Shield, if it did damage, would actually block the, the taunt. But in this case, it's going to taunt through the Guardian Shield. And it is going to take Cal out here. On an attack team, you basically do it to control people who are going to be doing, you know, very powerful signature moves. Or, you know, maybe potentially going to be reviving or maybe going into outlast state, that sort of thing. But those characters can be taunted for two turns. That means he's going to gain some of the AP that he'd be required to get the next rush. Um, on a defense team, that's where he'd gain some of that AP. But also, you can see that he's got a 50% defense bonus. And he was, I think, at like 70% HP, but now he's all the way up to 100%. No matter how much HP he's got, if he's got 10, you know, 10,000, 15,000, he'll be always pushed all the way back up to the, the maximum amount of HP that he has, unless he's got some heal reduction on him. But, pretend, you know, there isn't huge amounts of heal reduction around right now. So the potential for that, just giving him up to, you know, 60,000 HP in some cases is very high. So I like this Adrenaline Rush a lot. I do like these sort of two for twos. I think two for two is the real nice sweet spot, especially, you know, for anything basically. Stun, Taunt, Confuse. That's basically where there's a lot of power on attack or defense. And with Taunt, because you gain five AP for every character that attacks you, that's where it's going to help him get his rush naturally the next turn around. You can see the upgrades at grade two. He gets an extra taunt target, so it goes from one enemy to two, but grade two is not going to be too hard to come by. At uh, grade three, you can see there's a 25% defense up boost, and instead of it being 25% initial, it'll go to 50%. Then it will go an extra 25% healing, so initially it is only 25%. 
then it goes to 50% at grade 4, and then limit break 1 is where it gets the big boost, and, and that is actually a pretty good limit break 1 upgrade, we do see some limit break 1s that are not that great, and this plays really well into his kit, so if you do get extras off this character, it is going to be definitely worthwhile, 50% hit is still reasonable, but 100% hit is nuts, like I said, no matter where he's at, you could potentially get him down to that like 5-10 HP situation, which is going to be great, normally, but he's just going to be able to pick himself all the way back up. And uh, yeah, not exactly what you're going to be wanting to see when he is on a defense team. Now, Mike does have a signature move, of course. And it is going to play into something we've seen with one of the other Whisperer characters. And it is called Infecting Lunge. You can sort of see in the imagery, it's got like the green on the, uh, the blade at the top. I like that. Initial cooldown of turn one. So quite a lot like Alpha. Cooldown of two turns, number of uses unlimited. Attack one enemy for 200% damage. That enemy gets 30% infection for two turns. So pretty basic. He's going to do a reasonable amount of damage, but I don't see building damage on this character. So potentially you could argue that would have been better if it was bleed. It would have worked into the weapon because it is very like, you know, deep cut, bleedy kind of weapon. But it's okay. 200% damage. The infection is the important bit. It isn't a huge infection. But it does mean he has got some kill potential on things like Conquest and attack or defense teams in raids, you know, depending on the kind of teams you're trying to put together. And he's another infection character where it's going to happen really early, which is quite important for infection. You have to get infection off early, especially when it's low level and um, other things obviously have to come in afterwards, potential heal reduction, control, that sort of thing. But this is nice. I like this. And uh, he's going to have some teammates to work with. In the, Like I said, the likes of Alpha and no doubt other infection characters that are going to come out down the line. So it's pretty straightforward here. If you've ever used an infection character before or any sort of infection, you know how it works. You can target someone who's extremely tanky. So let's say Cliff in the bottom right hand corner here on a defense team would generally just be fully tanked out. Has no damage. And on conquest stages, that's pretty much everybody. And you would just use the signature move. And you can see that he is going to give that 30% infection. Now, you can see there's a little bit extra on here as well. You might be noticing a little bit extra on here as well. We'll get into that a little bit later, but that plays quite heavily into the, the power of that 30% infection. It actually increases that 30% that infection to be a little bit more. It, it kind of almost makes it, you know, a, a 45, 50% infection instead. So just worth keeping an eye on that. We'll get into that later on in his kit. And the way infection works, if you if you didn't already know, basically someone would have to heal that 30% infection in HP. So if someone has 10,000 HP, they'd have to heal 3,000 HP to cleanse that infection. It's 30% of their total HP needs to be healed to remove it. If it isn't healed, if it's like 29% and it gets to the end of their second turn, they will instantly be taken down, no matter how much defense they've got, no matter how much HP they've got at the time. They could be full HP and like, you know, 60,000 defense. It would just be an instant takedown. That is the power of, uh, of infection for sure. It is countered by certain things, fast healing weapons, for instance. But like you saw in that last clip, there is potential for some shenanigans there because of the uh, the hill reduction that did come in. We'll look at the upgrades. It's quite simple. At grade 5, it goes to minus 1 cooldown. And going from 3 cooldown to 2 cooldown is actually quite important. That is a, a nice important upgrade there. And at limit break 2, it gets 50% damage. I don't think this is that big a deal. That's not a great um, limit break 2. It kind of reminds me of like Mercers and stuff like that. Whereas this guy isn't really going to be a percentage damage. dealer. He's getting a bit of extra damage. I guess it's just okay. But it's, it's nothing really to, to write home about. Not like the Rush upgrade where it gets an extra big heal boost. Now we'll move on to Mike's mythic abilities. These are his passives. And this is where you're going to find out how did that heal reduction come in? As you can see, Mike's Mythic Abilities, he has got Cunning because he is a support character and he'll be able to get 30% chance to, you know, reduction in weapon procs. This includes like things like double attack and all that good stuff, stun on attack. So he's going to be quite hard to control with weapons. That's going to be quite cool, like really powerful for him on defense and attack, to be honest. So that's actually pretty interesting. Here's the next one, Crippling Affliction. When attacking the target, get 60% heal reduction for two turns. This works with that signature move because... That signature move has on attack effects that can proc. It also has on defense one, so you know how that works. If someone's got stun on defense, he can potentially get stunned. But it will make it so that that heal reduction procs with that infection, which is really nice combo. Like I said, it buffs that infection. That means that a 1,000 heal that comes in will now only heal for 600. 
and then 600 is going to be a lower percentage of the person's total hp and so on and so forth so that that 30 percent is just more enhanced and he can work in combination with someone like um alpha if you know how alpha works her her rush doesn't infect the target it infects someone else but her signature move does infect the target but it has no heal reduction which her rush does have so the combo between mike and alpha they could both target the last character alive someone like uh, jesse anderson on conquest and the 60 percent heal reduction would come in and alpha's infection would be like a much higher level infection really nice combo there the next one is called gore shield when performing the bodyguard specialist skill spoiler alert he has got bodyguard which we'll get into in a bit 40 percent chance to give one teammate a guardian shield this is nice it's very similar to mirabel and that's actually kind of frustrating to happen it doesn't say once per turn so what i'll do is i will test out to see if that can happen more than once per turn obviously uh, oh, actually, it is once per turn because Bodyguard can only proc once per turn. Okay, so with Mirabelle, it's when you attack her. And with Mike, it's when the actual Bodyguard um, special skill procs, which can only proc once per turn. So, yeah, yeah, there we know. We know. Uh, the next one is Pestilence, and this is extremely powerful for so many game modes. For Conquest, Attack, Defense, Raids, everything. When an enemy dies, one other enemy gets 50% infection for two turns. Not a chance to get infection. They just will. Whenever someone is taken out by any source, not just Mike, so you could have someone do a really heavy nuke turn one, Mike's just going to infect someone, and then he can infect someone else with his signature move. So you can have a lot of potential early takedown. Like, obviously that 50% can be countered, but you, you can effectively see where that goes. So you can take someone out with someone who's really offensive. The infection can go to, let's say, um, just let's just say any random character, and then you can attack that character with Mike's signature move. Now, it won't do a high infection. It won't stack the infection. But it, there will now be a 50% infection on that character and a 60% heal reduction. So, really nice, uh, nice combo there. Okay, so I'll show you how some of these passives work. And I'm not going to show you how the bodyguard one works with the, the, the guardian shield. I don't need to put him on defense and hit him loads of times. You know that it's got a 40% chance when the guardian procs. To actually give a guardian shield to a teammate so that's fine we're going to show you how the infection one works we're going to get harper her rush and we're just going to get her the ap and harper hits two with her rush so we're going to get a very fast rush off here now cliff will absorb some of that damage but someone else should get taken out should get taken out as the rush comes in we can see one character does get taken out indeed and you can see the 50 percent infection has gone up here to erica and i could potentially target someone else with mike to give the 30% infection, I could go with uh, with Cliff down here. Like, let's just do that. So now Cliff has a 30% infection as well. Or I could target Erica and give her heal reduction. But I can do that this turn. I can do that this turn. Let's say those Rush is just about to pop. I could decide, hey, I'm going to do that second turn basic attack. And then even if you do manage to get... Then you can control her. And then, you know, potentially control the healing potential here and this means at the end of this turn we should have two characters taken out for the defense team this is this is a support character being very offensive potential and as you can see when those two characters get taken out guess what infection 50 percent infection 50 percent the, the the sort of like collapse potential on conquest teams is really good this guy is gonna be honestly a tier one conquest character for sure I think he's going to be a little bit more of a niche raid and um, defense team character because infection, like in this way, isn't super quick. But I think on defense, it's going to be much more like potent. And the reason it's going to be more powerful on the defense team, generally speaking, is because he attack teams don't have heals, whereas defense teams generally do. So they've got more chance to recover from those situations. On attack, it's going to be really down to other characters that potentially come in with heal reduction or other characters that you have, for instance, you could use decap michonne or mike himself with his own heal reduction now we'll look at the upgrades crippling aff affliction is at grade one so that's the heal reduction which is i'd say a very important one to upgrade cunning at grade two the first half of cunning the first half of gore shield is at grade three and the second half of gore shield is at grade two those are the that's the guardian shield chance proc then we have grade five being pestilence and that's 30 percent of the 50 percent infection at um, grade five, like I said. Then we got Cunning two at, at limit break one, and then limit break two gives another 20% infection, and they stack together to make it a total of 50% infection for two turns when an enemy dies. So, yeah, 
very powerful. I think Pestilence, I think pretty much the entirety of his kit is important. I would say maybe Gore Shield's a little less important if you don't intend to use this character on the defense team. But this is a character where maxing out all those passives seems to be a really good idea. Now on to Mike's specialist skill, and it is a specialist skill close to my heart, especially with the kit that you've got here. If you recognize it, it's, it's a little bit Kelly-like, and even more so now when you look at the specialist skill, it is Bodyguard. The first time each turn that an ally teammate takes 30% of their max HP from a single attack, rush, active, or signature skill, this character will take that damage instead. Damage transfer this way is reduced by 50%. So he's going to keep attack team characters alive. He is strong, so he can work on those nice, strong attack teams. He's going to have great combos with Michonne 2000 because of this, because Michonne 2000 is a little bit flimsy. She hasn't got, like, huge amounts of defensive potential, but she's very offensive, whereas Mike's going to keep her alive for one big hit. And then, obviously, she could potentially give out a Guardian Shield and keep her alive for a, an extra hit, too. So two hits per turn, potentially, on a weak character would be absorbed by Guardian Shield and Mike's Bodyguard here with those two in the team. That's actually a really nice little combo. If you've used Kelly ever on attack team, you know he just he gives better survivability. He, and also, if you've also used him, you know that he's the guy who you put on the team who can hold that strong attack weapon. He does not really need to gain AP that much because he's going to get AP when Bodyguard procs. This is something that you need to know as well. When Bodyguard procs, and it's going to generally happen quite early, especially against these defense teams that dogpile, you know, attack team and, and generally damage dealers, you're going to have this proc off. He's going to get some AP for free and potentially get his rush earlier. So you could potentially get even a turn to rush in certain situations. Okay, so for this test, I'm going to use a bit more of a filled out team. We're going to do a basic attack with Michonne just to try and get a crit. And then, that, like I said, the Guardian Shields are going to go to the two people with the lowest HP. And we're just going to defend with pretty much everyone else. Just because I want to show you the AP gain for Mike. Count how many times Mike gets attacked and then check how much AP gain he gets. Actually, I need to do a basic attack to just get the AP. So we'll see what AP is going to have after a basic attack. He hasn't got um, he hasn't got AP on attack right now. I put a stat weapon in his hands because that's generally how you'd build him on an attack team. Then we go, he goes to 26 AP. Has been attacked no times. But he gets 5 AP for free. That might not seem like a lot. But he absorbs. And look at the HP numbers of all my characters. There was a little bit of bonus HP in there. But everyone's full HP. This doesn't happen too often. Now both teams don't have any lieutenant system. So it's very balanced here. And people have got full HP. If you know how it works off of turn 1 in generally, in generally speaking. That isn't the way it goes. So the Guardian Shield stopped one attack onto Michonne 2k. And then obviously Mike stopped another attack onto Michonne 2k. That's really nice. 40% of the damage potential of a defense team just got nullified just because of those two characters. So that combo would be great on an attack team, but that combo could work on any attack team or a defense team if you wanted to use another Guardian Shield like Mirabelle or Cal. That would be absolutely fine. And that just, like I said, it, it would protect your weakest characters or your, your lowest HP characters. Let's say you had a Zachary on a defense team. He's generally going to get the Guardian Shield because you're going to build his attack up a bit more. And... He's going to get hit harder because of that. That bodyguard will take it. And then if there's a guardian shield, it'll generally go to him as well. So, yeah, survivability is going to be increased by uh, on a lot of characters. Now, Mike does have an attached weapon. As you probably noticed, it is pretty hard to, uh, to miss that. Mike's Savage Gore-Covered Spear. Visually here, it actually looks pretty cool as well. Now, it has got 30% attack, a huge bonus to AP when attacking. And bonus attack, 45% attack when attacking enemies with more than 50% HP. So this is kind of a mixed bag. I mean, it, you, you don't really need attack on it, honestly. If it had HP, that would have been better. Um, but I would say this is a weapon that you kind of are fine to just instantly upgrade to 5-star and put whatever you want in their hands. If you are someone who's newer to the game and don't have, you know, huge amounts of resources, you can build off the base of this weapon. I would probably go for, like... HP and honestly the third slot will be pretty difficult off the base you're gonna have to get a pretty good third slot but it'll be mainly an attack team weapon with the huge bonus to AP on attack that's the the only reason that it's like half decent to to work off the base weapon if it had HP 30% HP off on, on the base I'd say it would be definitely worth going for like AP draining on the third slot but otherwise I'd, I'd probably just instantly five star this myself if I got this character and put a weapon in his hands that had HP defense um, stun on attack and strong attacks. That's going to be like the perfect combo and have him in a, a reasonably heavy strong attack team. On defense, I would say 
you could probably just give him like a pretty much a similar weapon, but instead in the in the four slot, you would be uh, doing maybe reduction to crit, you know, damage or something like that, or heals based on his AP. Um, you know, th one of those two. Strong don't have the greatest four slots. I mean, I guess you could go for st Stonewall if you wanted. It's completely up to you there. So that is Gold Mythic Mike, and I actually think this character is pretty good. He is kind of filling a gap, which I think still needs to be filled a bit more. We need more support characters for attack teams, or at least options. But this is a great option for a strong attacks team. I can see teams coming out that have like Mike and Rick as the support characters. Then you have a leader that's going to be Negan or Harper and your damage dealers are going to be you know Michonne 2000 and you know Decap Michonne so that's going to be a pretty heavy core team I think Mike's going to be uh, pretty good on attack on defense I think I think he's going to be pretty nasty especially comboed with Cliff because bodyguard can proc twice per turn it can only proc once per character so Cliff and Mike in the same team that if you've ever come up against double bodyguard characters on defense teams before it basically nullifies percentage attack teams so heavily, so, so heavily. And Mike can work with Barker as well. He is obviously a, a newer leader that's come out, so you can have Mike on a Barker defense team. So, yeah, very interesting there, guys. Very interesting indeed. But what do you think about Mike, guys, as a gold mythic character? Do leave your thoughts in the comments down below. That is the end of my video. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.